more people are cutting their savings to make ends meet. They are switching to cheaper products, feeling less secure about retirement, and they're delaying big purchases. That is what Americans are saying in a new Federal Reserve survey on economic confidence. In it, the percentage of people who said they were doing at least okay financially in 2022 dropped by five percentage points. That's the most since this survey was launched a decade ago, down to 73%. It was down from a record high the year before, by the way, so it's a lot to sort out. We called U of M professor Paul Valor to reality check things when it comes to inflation and how we're doing. We've seen tumult. We've come out of a pandemic. We've gone into a war and we've seen the economy start from a standing start to rev up. So lots of things that are just different in terms of volatility than before. And for individuals, it may be hard to anchor that in what is a kind of a normal reality. We haven't seen that in about four or five years. People are changing their decisions. They're buying generic brands. You know, they're changing what they're buying. They're putting on for retirement. They have fewer savings. So there is a real impact for people. Some of the inflation we saw in 2022 was around commodities, the things we buy at the grocery stores. And a natural inclination is to go to find where they're cheaper. Now we're seeing that a lot of those supply chain issues and a lot of the commodity issues are easing. So the price of eggs is down. The price of oil is down. And so what we might see is we might see in the near term individuals reverting to where they used to buy things, how they used to make investments towards retirement. We might see something that's regressing back to the mean where we were before the pandemic. How is inflation doing compared to a year ago? So better from the standpoint of being lower is better. It's like a golf score. We saw it spike as up or around 9% in 2022. Not maybe uh, surprising given that we had a war. We saw a spike in energy prices. And again, we were coming out of this standing start economy that just revved up. Now what we've seen is that I think in March of 2023, we saw inflation at a rate of around 2%, which is where we were in the 2010s. That doesn't mean that we're gonna stay right there. We're still a fast growing economy with unemployment that's at all time lows. So the inflation rate is gonna to continue to come down, I think. It'll come down nearer to where we were in the 2010s, but perhaps not quite as high. If we were here 30 years ago, we might be talking about background inflation of four or 5%. Well, we're at or a little below that right now. So it's about anchoring where we were and where we are going. What has gotten cheaper? Commodities. I think the price of eggs and butters, when you go into the grocery store, we see that those are down. That was in part because of one-off pandemic issues. Uh, we had a bird flu issue with eggs and other commodities. That's the case. Oil has been coming down, which is remarkable, given that we've been fighting a war in Ukraine and Russia, two of the biggest oil producers that are around. And yet we've seen through, I think, a combination of conservation, smart redirection of our energy sources, the price of oil come down to where it was essentially before the war began. That's remarkable. Where we see inflation still, though, is I think with wages. Um, we saw a lot of winners at the bottom end in 2021, especially entry level wages. A lot of inflation ate that up in 2022. What we see now is still pressure at that lower end entry wages. That might be a good issue for closing some of the income inequality gap that goes with it. We have to watch now what happens to that rate of wage inflation at the lower end and see if those gains are moderated. I think your economic outlook isn't so bad. Right. I see a lot of really positive things. For example, we're back at all-time unemployment lows, especially here in the Twin Cities, somewhere around 2%, 3%. That's frictional unemployment. Trends tell you a lot. And the trends right now, especially in the last six months, have been decreasing inflation, but a really great employment market for individuals. Those are two good harbingers. And in Minnesota specifically, we're doing a little bit better than the national average. We tend to. We're a headquarters economy here in the Minneapolis-St. Paul region. We have a better educated workforce. We just have a better diversified industrial base. We tend to do better, and that's continuing to be the case. The extraordinary times may be behind us. Uh, What's that Chinese proverb? May you live in interesting times? Maybe they're going to get a little bit less interesting in the near term. There you have it. Paul says we are anchored to low inflation, so we're essentially addicted to cheap money. That is part of the problem, but we're not historically anchored, so he thinks we'll get closer to what we're used to in recent times and that he's seeing certain things already work themselves out.